Uh, I thought I'd show some assembly tips on the animated Obi-Wan. So this is the chest plate. It's pretty much all the parts that you would uh, receive in a, in a kit. You got the biceps, handbacks, forearms. I know a lot of people are asking about the assembly process of the forearms. Um, got the other parts of the biceps. This is the back insert piece. You get two collars. I'll explain why. I think some people might have been asking why do we get two collars. Uh, the ankle straps. set you got the calves and the shins left and right and the shoulder bells the uh, inners and outers all right so this is the animated obi-wan set um, I think I'll start explaining with the collar as I as I know some people have been asking why do they get two um, the reason is this needs to fit around your your neck, obviously. So I thought maybe if you wanted to cut from here to here, here to here, and if your cut is good, then this becomes your front piece. And then you can do the same thing to this one, but using the back half to come together. The reason why I mentioned that is if you're cutting, uh, even with let's say a, a Dremel uh, tool and you're cutting through, it's gonna remove material. And uh, if, even if you use like a, a hacksaw, you know, or something, that's still gonna remove material because of the thickness of the cutting device. Uh, and you can probably use your basic, you know, carpenter's knife, because that's, you know, not gonna re remove too much material. Uh, but there's a lot of angles to this. So I just thought, let me include a second one. That way, um, if too much material is removed and you need this to fit properly, uh, so that it keeps the, the nice circle around there, you can do that. And I thought maybe if you got uh, like a epoxy that you could build up on the inside and attach magnets so that the back piece could fit. So like if this was cut at an angle where my, my fingers are and you knew that from this point to this point it was enough for your, uh, in, your neck to fit through and then the back would just magnetize in place. And then this obviously sits down in this area here. So you would cut out this area. And then this would cut out, giving just a little bit of a return edge, similar to the same return edge that all these parts have. And then of course this would fit in the back here as well. Uh, some people ask me, well, how do you keep all these in place? So that's really up to you. I mean, a lot of people like to use Velcro. You can also uh, use magnets if, if you're uh, more into using magnets to keep your parts stationary. Um, but Velcro and nylon and snaps and all those different type of uh, systems of, of holding like a harness together would work just fine. Uh, so you have pretty much endless options on how you'd want to assemble the upper chest area for the Obi-Wan or also now uh, considered the uh, Jedi because also standard or armored Jedi can wear the same armor. And um, the kit would normally include, this is what I call the, we're gonna move on to the arms here for a second, the smooth curved elbows. Okay, because uh, Obi-Wan in specific, you know, for the first few seasons, he had a very curved, uh, smooth elbow. And then later, uh, when he wasn't wearing all the armor pieces, he had more of a triangle. I don't know if you guys can see the, the reflection here, pick up this kind of triangle shape elbow. Um, so if you're doing like a generic Jedi, armored Jedi, you do have the option to order this kit with the triangle um, or with the smooth curved elbow pieces. And um, and of course, you also have the option to get the compad. Compad may come in black or white. That just depends on what material that we're using. Um, so this is another piece that you could also purchase to go with the kit. Uh, so um, biceps are set up so that the notch is as uh, like a square notch to match the elbow cutout. So this bicep is different than the clones. Clones had a tapered uh, cutout in the back. So obviously this would be the front. 
If you notice, the top is very flat and the bottom has a slight curve. That's to give your arm a little bit more uh, movement uh, when, you, when you're wearing the armor. So, um, so you got the two fronts. There's no difference between left or right and then the backs. Now, I will say that you want to look at this section here. This is kind of important. You see how there's kind of like this step down here uh, on both of these back pieces. And this just has a straight line. Hopefully you can see this in the reflection. So um, I also have that same idea here in the legs. You notice there's a little bit of a step down here. Um, and then for the back calf, there's just a straight line. So this is something important. This is something I developed uh, back in 2009. Uh, it's what I call a connection flange. Um, basically what this does is this gives you the area uh, to glue. You don't have to use a shim on the inside. You'll just kind of, you'll cut off this section right here from where it flares out, but you'll keep this flat section next to this step. So this is the recessed flange. And if you do a nice cut on that line here and you bring that together, when they come together, it creates a uh, level, uh, kind of a seamless look, because that's important, especially with clones and in and, and the animated series. So that eliminates a whole lot of steps as far as having to cut a separate piece and doing what was uh, formerly known as a butt joint of two pieces of plastic coming together then having to reinforce it with another piece of plastic behind. So that's something I engineered and developed and, um, and I, it's the process that I've created for a lot of my vac form kits. And that mimics the same way with the uh, legs. If you notice, if you cut along here and you go ahead and cut off this extra bit where my thumb is, so you can see this kind of line right here, then this area here is where you will glue and you bring that, that together. Now on this side, I created indentions where you can have Velcro, and this is a large area you can have Vel Velcro. So on this side, you'll still cut um, this shape out here so that it, it mimics the shape that you need right here. Um, but this Velcro is, and up here is what's gonna help keep the inner part of the leg closed. So I knew that was really important. Obviously, we need to be able to wear these and they're very tight around the ankle by nature. That's the animated design. Uh, so in order to wear it, you know, the outside is glued to create that seamless look. But the inside, you use Velcro to hold it in place. So um, again, it kind of has that recessed uh, connection flange, but on the inner part, you'll use Velcro. Um, so that pretty much kind of explains sort of the basic parts here. It's very similar to my uh, animated clone. If you look at a lot of my animated video of clone, you'll show how to assemble and glue the connection flange. Um, I prefer to use Zappa Gap, uh, CA glue, and the kicker. But keep in mind, anytime you're using something like this, you want to make sure that you're wearing uh, gloves, okay? It's uh, relentless. It will glue your skin together uh, and um, that's that. Uh, it's not very easy to, to come off, and it's like, as I say, 10 times stronger than super glue. So um, those are these main components. As I said, we got you know, the chest uh, and back and collar components. We've got the lower leg components, the bicep components uh, for the shoulder bell. Uh, you can see the assembly video of these as well. Basically, there's the outer, and then I created what I call an inner. Now, the reason for this is, if you notice, this, when it goes together, has like a, an illusion of, of thickness. This is to give that, that offset off the shoulder, uh, so it kind of has like a, that airspace. So this is something else I designed to have an inner piece to give you that um, that offset for your shoulders. So those, uh, basically, you know, all this needs to get trimmed out first. You glue that in place and you can go around with the belt sander and clean up the edging uh, all the way around to make it like one solid piece. And then uh, Velcro with some nylon straps to keep that in place. And again, maybe like a, another elastic or a nylon strap to connect from the shoulder belt down to your bicep uh, to keep your bicep in place. That's kind of what I recommend. That's what I do um, for, for most of my armor is using you know nylon, Velcro, snaps, uh, elastic, any, any of those basic um, components you can get at any fabric uh, store, such as like Joann's or something. Um, and these are the ankle pieces you cut out and you will attach these to your um, boots or shoes. Again, probably using Velcro uh, or snaps, whatever your preference is. They are labeled left and right. So those are the uh, ankle pieces. Okay, so let's talk about the forearms here for a minute. Um, this would be 
as I said, the uh, smooth curve, this is the triangle. They're gonna assemble exactly the same. And I also offer just the forearms alone. If you didn't wanna get the full set, you can also order just the forearms. So I'm just gonna explain what you're gonna get here in a kit. You're gonna get two of these components that have the elbows. I'll leave, move these over here to the side for a moment. You're gonna get this piece that has four sections. There's some uh, lines down the side here that um, I'll explain why. And a lot of people get confused on that because you're also gonna get two inners that are smooth. All right, so let me explain the purpose of this. These two components will go together like a butt joint. As I mentioned before, what that is is basically having a straight cut on one end and a straight cut on the other, and you want those two pieces to come together. These parts do not have a connection flange like my biceps or like my legs do. Uh, the reason is because you can size these uh, according to what your needs are. Meaning, uh, if you need these to go around, you know, the uh, cloth coverings of a Jedi, um, then you probably need these wider. If you're not, if you're wearing these uh, with something else, maybe a tighter uh, uh, fabric that's tighter to your skin, then you could probably make these smaller. And also, that's gonna also depend on the size of your forearms, obviously. So, I did not create a connection flange on these so that gives you a variety of sizing in the circumference that you would need to fit your arms. Um, so what I, what I provided is this. So this, you would cut down these lines to create four inner um, uh, connection pieces uh, or like a shim, some people call it a shim. And what that would do is that will help connect this piece. If this was glued on the inside here, and then this piece together, okay, because these are very complex uh, curves and angles and, and so forth, that you really need a piece of plastic to go on the inside that's gonna mimic the, the correct shape so that it glues properly and is not you know, uncomfortable inside as well. Uh, so that's what this piece is. You cut this to create four shims so that you could glue it and also glue it on both sides, but that also depends on if you have the ability to slide your hand through. Um, and then you might need to cut this back a little bit to make this open, or you might need to change the angle a little bit uh, to keep this uh, wide enough for your wrist and hand to fit through. Now, the reason why I say you have the choice to glue on both sides is because chances are maybe what you actually need is to glue one side, but leave the other side open like a clamshell so that you can use magnets or maybe even um, Velcro to keep the, the inside, you know, the lower part. So you'd always want the outside to look really nice and smooth and clean because that's probably where your logo or your design is going to go and also the compad will go. But the bottom half is um, not seen as much, especially when your arms are down at your side. So if you needed any particular side to open, that would be the one, the one not facing outward. Uh, but hopefully you can use this here and shim uh, all four sides to each arm to make it a full closure forearm. And again, the uh, set with the triangle, same thing, comes with the two smooth inners. It comes with the, uh, with the piece that you will section into four parts to create four shims, to glue it together. And of course you get the uh, forearm portion of the elbow being triangle if you choose to order that particular one, as well as handbag. And um, again, you still have the option if you wanted to order the compad uh, to go with either the forearm set or the full uh, Jedi set. So hopefully with the forearms, um, that, that explains the purpose of why there's this extra piece here, you know, why you get the uh, elbows, the inners, and this extra one. A lot of people are, are confused by this one. Um, then of course it comes with the handbags that you can attach uh, with Velcro or snaps or whatever you prefer. Uh, hopefully this kind of explains the, the basics of the assembly. I would recommend penciling all of your cut lines first, just your basic pencil, and going through what I call a score and snap technique, where you would then score with a sharp blade of where you're going to cut and applying pressure, ripping downward in, uh, in a, a nice motion to uh, remove the excess, and then going back with sandpaper or belt sander or you know, if you if you feel more comfortable using a Dremel tool, you can use a, a Dremel tool. Uh, so that's the basics for assembling of the Jedi armored uh, kit as well as the Jedi forearm kit.